Well, hello. Welcome to uh, the Asia Franchise Guys, our franchise stories. Uh, my name is Sean No, and uh, we've got Brett Larrabee with us here today. Uh, this is our inaugural uh, episode, so uh, maybe it's fitting to maybe do a brief introduction of who we are. So, Brett, maybe you can start first. Sure. <clears throat> my name is Brett Larrabee. I've been doing uh, franchise development and consulting for more than 35 years with big brands, little brands, food brands, service brands, pretty much everything franchising. Um, you know, what has consumed me for the past several years is international franchise development, specifically that in Asia. And um, I'm here today to talk to you about, you know, specifically that and anything else that would be of interest to uh, our listening group uh, regarding franchising. Thanks, Brett. Uh, so my name is Sean No, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of a company called VF Franchise Consulting. Uh, you can see on my beautiful blue screen back here that uh, our headquarters is in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, Vietnam. I am a Vietnamese American. I grew up in the, in the US, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as the Pacific Northwest, specifically uh, Seattle. Most of my life, unfortunately, I'm not like Brett. I, uh, most of my life, I was actually a finance guy, and I worked for finance uh, in the financial role uh, for many companies in the Bay Area. Obviously, a lot of a lot of tech startups, uh, and then also for Microsoft. You may have heard about Microsoft, so I worked for them for a number of years before moving to Vietnam. And um, you know, I um, have the pleasure of bringing in. Uh, the first American burger chain to Vietnam, uh, a brand that you may be familiar with, Carl's Jr. So that was well before McDonald's hit the market. That was well before Burger King and everybody else that is basically here already uh, in Vietnam. And, and so that's how I got into franchising. Uh, so enough of that. Uh, I guess today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's hot in franchising during as well as after the pandemic. So beauty before age, uh, Brett, you may wanna start, get your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, the cool thing about the pandemic is that it really created a lot of opportunity as well as unfortunately some sorrow, but from a business perspective, um, you know, the whole dynamic in the food genre of delivery and carry out has been big and probably even more so delivery than carry out. And those brands that have a food product that can be delivered um, from the kitchen to the customer's door <clears throat> in a way that's still uh, tasty and quality driven, those brands, you know, i.e. pizza, uh, possibly chicken, um, you know, other protein items that, that carry well, uh, have really been very hot during the pandemic. And then, you know, of course, service brands have, especially in the U.S., been a big uh, piece uh, of the puzzle. So, um, you know, people are stuck at home. They're looking at their four walls. They want to paint. They want to uh, fix the bathroom. They want to, you know, remodel the kitchen. So, you know, those home improvement slash service brands have really been hot as well. Well, you know, what are I'm, your thoughts there? Well, you know, I, I was just going to jump in there, Brad. And I, I think, uh, you know, we've uh, we've been fortunate because, uh, you know, from from a sense that we are now offering brands that fit the, these types of booming sectors, uh, you know, and, and like you said, believe it or not, there are businesses that are doing very well uh, and have managed uh, the pandemic quite well. And, and they look like that that process will continue, that momentum will continue uh, as we, uh, you know, overcome the, the, the current pandemic uh, with all the vaccines that are coming uh, and that is being rolled out all across the world, right? And so, you know, like you said, home improvement, people are living at home, they're staying at home all day, you know, and all of a sudden the pain in their room is not looking nice or, you know, they're more observant of the things that need repair and, and brands like Ace Hardware, uh, believe it or not, are doing extremely well. Uh, and, and, you know, this goes into another category, and that is uh, for, for some businesses, 
whether it's, you know, fast food with pizzas and chicken and sandwiches, uh, you know, and, and Donna kebabs uh, versus, you know, retail like, like, like Ace Hardware, a lot of these businesses are considered essential businesses. So they've been, uh, you know, open for most of the time uh, throughout this pandemic. And, and uh, the fact that people have lost jobs uh, in virtually every country, economies have slowed uh, all across the board uh, and value types of products and services uh, are top of mind for many consumers. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, the, the one thing personally I've learned out of this pandemic is that, you know, you can't be stuck with one mindset. You have to <clears throat> look at your surroundings and find things that are working. You know, I kind of liken it to a stock account when you see a stock keep going down, there's a point at which you have to sell and move on. Um, and I think that that has a lot to do with careers and uh, businesses and life in general that um, what worked in the past may not, in fact, work well in the future. And um, I remember before the pandemic, uh, as a food, uh, as a as a food guy, uh, you know, I uh, was constantly reminded day in and day out how much consumers wanted delivery. But uh, kind of within the, the brands I was working with, we always saw delivery as extra credit, kind of that thing that somebody else did maybe we would do it we'd add a few sales but that really wouldn't be our core business and um you know after the pandemic um i still see people resisting uh the idea of delivery but in fact that's what people want and that's what's going to drive um you know that business forward so you know, if, you, if you're considering being in a food business, you really want to be somewhere where you can be delivery focused. Uh, and, then, and if you can't do delivery or as an alternative, this idea of omni-channel delivery. So delivery, uh, drive-through, uh, contactless pickup, all of these, you know, opportunities, curbside delivery, these things uh, are what make uh, the business were profitable this pandemic. Yeah, you know, you know, and, and, and perhaps to take it a, a step further, what we are seeing here in Asia, and I think this is happening globally as well, is that uh, not only our brands, whether it's in F&B or retail, uh, et cetera, uh, you know, not, not, they're experiencing, you know, a boom in, in retail, online retail sales and F&B sales, uh, and also what you're, you're starting to see is uh, a boom in what is, you know, the cloud kitchens, you know, instead of coming, you know, a brand coming typically into a country and opening up, you know, brick and mortar stores, uh, many of them are looking at the possibility of opening up brick and mortar stores and at the same time doing things like cloud kitchens uh, and the like, just because of the booming uh, online retail sales and, and delivery market and, you know, from, from Grab here in Asia that does amazing amounts of uh, deliveries for, for retail as well as F&B to Uber in other markets and, and the thousands of other brands that are, that are out there that focus on delivery and takeout and, and uh, the Omni channels that you just mentioned. I think um, it, it is booming so fast that uh, it makes sense for brands uh, in many ways to explore all of these uh, avenues as they as they cope with the current pandemic. But more importantly, uh, a lot of these buying behaviors, that from, from what we can tell from what experts are saying, uh, is that uh, these buying behaviors, buying online, staying at home uh, more often, staying at the workplace more often, and, and leaving the office less, uh, is really going to be uh, something that is going to be taken into the future. And I don't know if you're seeing that in the U.S. as well, Brett, but uh, certainly we are seeing uh, trends like that uh, happening in Asia today. Oh, absolutely. Like even pre-pandemic, the, the idea that we're all working longer, we're all struggling with uh, time constraints, uh, family responsibilities, not only young children, but older parents, et cetera. You know, the idea of convenience 
has actually become more relevant um, than it ever has before. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, I think the pandemic just kind of pushed the obvious to the forefront. And those brands that, you know, can deliver, have the flexibility to work out of a cloud kitchen, have the flexibility to have a drive through have, you know, all these different omni-channel delivery uh, processes to the customer are really going to benefit. And so that's one of the core learnings that I've had from a food perspective coming out of this. And then, of course, like you said, with Ace Hardware, you know, the home improvement genre is just huge in every aspect. So uh, whether it be hardware, um, you know, the actual services of, you know, plumbing, electrical, painting, uh, flooring, window covering, all of this stuff is just super hot right now. And I think we'll be into the future because really, you know, we were focused on going to work before the pandemic. And here's the other trend. Um, this idea that we would be more productive at work, um, I think was kind of a false narrative. Um, we've always done it. So we were always going to do it kind of thing. And then the pandemic came along and I have to tell you, I haven't worked as hard uh, as I have in the last year, you know, in fact, because my work is at home, just never goes away. So um, I think that businesses are starting to understand that working from home is probably even more productive in many ways. Um, and, and this working from home trend will only increase uh, the need for home services going forward. Yeah, you know, and, and you're right, that, that trend is not gonna change. You know, you know it just, just re reading in the recent news, you know, companies like Apple or Google, I mean, they're, they're already telling their employees, you know, this is the new block, you know, this is the way things are going to be uh, in the future. So unless you really need to be at the office uh, face to face, a lot of your work can be done at home uh, you know, virtually as well. And I, and I think that, that that really bodes very well for many other areas. I know we talked uh, F&B, we talked retail, but also even in education, for example, I mean, I have two, two young kids and they're going to schools. And, and when the pandemic first hit, uh, you know, all of the schools shut down, just like, just like it is in, in virtually every country. But over time, uh, you know, the schools have been very resilient. They've been able to work out that, hey, look, that don't panic. Uh, we can manage the pandemic and at the same time allow for our kids uh, to get a good education, to continue to have the good education. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, they very, very quickly came out with online training, online education solutions, uh, and, and some are more effective than others, but certainly, uh, you know, the, 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 whether it's the public education system or the private education system, mm -hmm. uh, they were amongst the very, very first businesses uh, and organizations uh, that were able to adapt to the pandemic and, and, and for the most part have adapted quite well. Yeah, and I think, you know, possibly uh, some of the the positives of that is that the kids have learned resiliency too. Um, maybe the downside is, is that, you know, some, some auxiliary education or other education services are going to be needed to help kids kind of reinstate some of the, the opportunities they had um, to learn in this last year. So, you know, I think, you know, from a franchising perspective, there's that constant need to have uh, help in the education uh, genre uh, with kids so they can bolster their capabilities, you know, learn new languages, you know, find new opportunities going forward because the, the education model is still changing um, and probably will over the course of the next couple of years. Um, and, you know, I, I, I remember when I, I left high school and I went to college, I realized I didn't have to wake up at 7 a.m. Every, every day anymore. I could take later classes. And quite honestly, I could take classes that, that I enjoyed and I was passionate about. And I think, you know, what, what happens is, 
the opportunity for uh, all of us to to learn and grow and find new ways to uh, educate ourselves, whether whether that be just a new language or math or science, um, STEM, if you will. I think those things uh, will be important, you know, really important in the future too. So um, definitely a, another driving trend coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, when it comes to education, uh, you know, especially as you know, Brett, I mean, you've, uh, you're, you're well-traveled and well-experienced working in Asia as well as many parts of the world. But specifically Asia, I, I think the education factor uh, is very, very important, right? And mm -hmm. parents are very, very concerned. Uh, they, they want their kids to continue to get the best education as, as much as possible. Uh, you know, and obviously online education is not going to be the 100% solution. Uh, you know, we're always going to need uh, children to be able to go back to school uh, in, in a very safe manner and to continue to grow. But at the same time, what we're seeing is many organizations and private education businesses, uh, you know, like, for example, Helen Duran English or Helen Duran Kindergarten uh, to Wall Street English to QCO, uh, you know, they're all blending in uh, you know, the, the online component of it. And what COVID did was, uh, you know, and, and, and COVID did, did this better than any uh, CTO at any of these companies. They basically expedited the entire online program and uh, made sure that these businesses and organizations were able to, to, to manage the pandemic in a very quick, efficient way uh, and continue to deliver the value that they need to for for children and, and what parents were looking for. Uh, and at the same time, you know, having grown up in the U.S. Uh, and having been based here in Asia for nearly 20 years now, uh, I mean, you know, the traffic is horrible, right? Going from one place to another. So in some ways, taking the education online saved people a lot of time. It saved parents a lot of time. It saved the kids a lot of time instead of having to get into a car uh, and, you know, going to and fro from the school, uh, the kids could be at home, you know, having dinner or just before dinner, taking their online courses and continuing on with life as normal without having to waste uh, time traveling from point A to point B. So, so in some ways, uh, the online education sector uh, you know, benefited greatly from this, uh, you know, from this pandemic uh, in a strange way. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, I was just thinking um, on another note, because um, my stomach's growling a little bit. Um, well, it's early. It's early in your time. I appreciate the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you that, you know, kind of all the stress and change that has come from the pandemic has created kind of a a, 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 a real need for comfort food. So, um, you know, those things that, you know, are, are kind of, uh, you know, melted cheese, fried chicken, um, you know, Donner kebabs, these things that, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, are, are food that we crave, you know, especially, uh, you know, in times of, of, of stress, um, have really, have really been in demand. And I can tell you that almost on a daily basis, people are saying, Hey, what do you have in the pizza category? What do you have in the fried chicken category? You know, what do you have, you know, in the Donner kebab category? These are things that, that people, um, you know, maybe they don't need, maybe we should all eat more salad, but we don't, you know, we we're looking for, we're looking for those things that will comfort us. And, um, you know, maybe this is more of the same, but, but I think, you know, just along the lines of what you're talking about, how, how the, the virus expedited change in the education field, I think people are even more, uh, desirous of those things that will comfort them that are familiar uh, 
the only difference is, is they're looking for those things, not necessarily, um, you know, inside a restaurant right now, they're looking for those things from a delivery perspective, from a drive through perspective, carry out perspective, you know, and then, you know, there's this other thing that will happen Pose um, once uh, the virus starts to uh, fade away, which is people will be looking for social experiences, right? So they'll be looking to go out and, you know, enjoy the company of others. But in many ways, talking to you from, um, Michigan and the U.S., that seems like months, if not a year or more away. So as sad as that may seem, uh, there's tons of opportunities now. Um, but, you know, those things that are social oriented or, you know, focused on experiential, you know, dine in restaurants, for instance, um, are still, it seems kind of a light year away. Uh, but there's tons of opportunity now. And I think that um, a lot of people are waiting to see how this plays out. And there's a whole number of people that aren't waiting, that are kind of jumping in and finding those opportunities that will work and um, engineering their franchise investment process to work in the new reality, uh, in the present reality. And, you know, if things change, then that'll be, you know, for the better, that'll be extra credit for them, for us all. Um, but there are a number of folks that, that aren't counting on, uh, things necessarily getting better. They're looking to the now, uh, to jump in and, and find business opportunities. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, you know, just over the last three months, three, four months here, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're based in Vietnam, but, uh, and, and, you know, Vietnam's done an incredible job as you know, Brett, uh, in terms of managing the pandemic. But like anywhere else, I mean, you know, uh, growth is slower, uh, but it's still positive, uh, which is uh, quite amazing, uh, you know, um, in, in many ways. But reality is, regardless of the business that we're seeing, right, whether it's in health and fitness, uh, whether it's in education, like we talked about, or F&B or retail, you know, really the focus is on value, uh, convenience, right? And the fact that economies in general have not done as well, uh, these types of businesses continue to be uh, essential to the economies, right? And uh, it's good for consumers, uh, but it's also good uh, in many ways because consumers get to support these businesses which keep people employed uh, and allow them to make incomes uh, you know, as we go along, a, a, as we head towards recovery. Uh, and, I, and I think all these businesses that you mentioned, you know, uh, whether it's fast food or, or, you know, similar types of businesses, I think, uh, uh, you know, when, when we are asked, and we are asked quite often what businesses, what sectors make the most sense, uh, we see huge opportunities uh, in all of these sectors, like even in the fitness industry. I don't know if you've seen this, Brett, but I mean, we, we have a couple of brands called GoFit and, and Fire Fitness, and they've been able to, uh, you know, incorporate technology uh, into, it, you know, it, it, into the fitness programs where, you know, you're, you're, you're going to the fitness center and normally you would take a classroom full of people, but now they've got a virtual classroom. You can go in there. You can do the, your weights, you can do your cardio, you know, cardio, and then you can also do, you know, classrooms, but it's virtual. Uh, and so there isn't that, uh, you know, you know, you, you're still able to keep your space and, you know, uh, all, all those requirements that uh, businesses are required to have uh, because of these times, but they're, they're able to adjust to these types of programs uh, and make it fun you know, and, and you know, I, and I, I'm like one of those people where, you know, I can choose to work out at home or I can choose to go to the gym. And for me, and, and, I, and I'm guessing for a lot of people, uh, you know, going to the gym is a very important part of uh, becoming healthier, right? Because, uh, you know, you, you, you've got your mindset, you're going to the gym, you're going to work out. Uh, maybe you want to go to the steam or a sauna, uh, you know, as a reward afterwards. Uh, but I enjoy all those things. And the only way you can do that is to actually go to the gym. But of course, uh, you know, going to the gym is a, a new experience now. 
and, and in many ways, I think even more enjoyable. No, agreed. And, and look, we all need some of the things we had before. We need to be able to exercise, work out, um, find ways to focus on ourselves. And, you know, these things will be important moving forward. Those fitness brands that have the ability to pivot, not only to teach you online, but allow you to interact with technology is going to be key, um, you know, now and into the future. Um, and, you know, the, some of the brands actually that maybe even don't have a studio that can, um, you know, give you personal training in your home or outside or in a venue that um, is potentially, you know, more safe, um, you know, than a, um, you know, than a room or, or a studio may in fact be those uh, fitness brands that thrive. So, you know, uh, there's, there's all these opportunities kind of going forward in, in a number of categories. Um, and, and what I'd like to say today to kind of give uh, emphasis to the things we're talking about is that uh, some of the opportunities that we see in franchising right now, in many ways are, are I guess, opportunistic A, but B, uh, I've never seen before. Um, you know, those people that are, are finding those focuses, you know, the omnichannel food, um, the opportunities with education, uh, the opportunities with home improvement. I mean, they're doing exceptionally well, maybe even better than I've ever seen in my entire career. And, you know, the time really is now to jump into opportunities that um, this pandemic has opened up um, and allowed people to, uh, you know, grow wealth with. And I think that you know, that's really, you know, what I came today to talk about is that, is that there really is a, 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 an open door now that hasn't really been there before that is very opportunistic. And uh, for those that are willing to look at it through that lens, uh, I think there really is no better time to jump into the franchise market, um, especially in Asia. You know, in, in Asia, you have just you have things that quite honestly don't have in every part of the world you have uh you have density you have lots and lots of people and and that that in and of itself provides opportunity that just isn't found everywhere plus you know um some of these franchise brands just don't have a lot of uh a lot of locations in asia right so um there's just opportunity you know like with ace hardware you know everywhere and um, with, you know, Don, a brand like Donner Shack, um, you know, there's opportunity everywhere. There really isn't a lot of competition. And so now really provides a very unique time benefit to jump into the franchise market and, you know, kind of develop when other people aren't developing. And uh, that, I think, is probably the real message here today. Well, you know, I, I think that summarizes it, it, it all, Brad. I, I think uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, from what we are seeing around the region, I, I think there is continued interest. Obviously, there are businesses that have been hurt and, uh, you know, their main focus is to focus on their current businesses and the portfolios they manage. But, uh, you know, for, for other businesses where they're thinking really five, 10 years down the line, they're thinking about building businesses. A lot of businesses in Asia, as you know, are family-owned businesses. They're thinking about the next generation. Uh, and the fact that uh, they may be in a position uh, to uh, you know, take on new business opportunities, obviously with a little bit more risk. But at the same time, uh, you know, with risk comes rewards. And I think these are uh, some of the times when, when, when the things go, you know, when things go, are, are, are when things go difficult, uh, you know, uh, there are always certain investors and businesses that are willing to make the, the hard but uh, wise decision to move forward uh, and invest into the future. And of course, again, that depends on uh, each individual business and how they have been impacted so far 
and the resources at hand, but, but certainly that seems to be the case. Now, uh, I, I am gonna have to jump in here, Brad. I, I think uh, we are reaching our maximum allowed 20, 25-ish minutes now. So uh, any final words from you before we wrapped up? Yeah, you know, I, I just like to say to the, the listening group, you know, this is going to be a forum going forward that, to provide information and, and help and uh, direction for those people that are looking at, at a worthy franchise investment. And, you know, both Sean and I represent a lot of different brands um, that we believe have, you know, significant benefit for investors. Um, you know, but we're also people who enjoy the franchise space and want to help those people involved. So, um, you know, as our inaugural uh, uh, opportunity to speak with you as the Asia Franchise Guys, we want this to be a forum of support, of help, uh, of benefit to everybody. So we look forward to working with you and hope to see you again soon. Yes, uh, I uh, wholeheartedly agree with Brett. And uh, if any comments, leave them down below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, uh, even if it's just a chat uh, or if you have any just specific questions about franchising per se, we'd love to begin that discussion with you and uh, hope in any ways. Um, well, with that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their time. Uh, and on behalf of Brett and myself, uh, wishing you a safe and uh, happy uh, year, uh, you know, uh, in 2021. And uh, see you again in approximately two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.